Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation, a very exponential equation. We have 2 to the power, 3 to the power, 4 to the power x, and that is equal to 4 to the power, 3 to the power, 2 to the power x. And we're going to be solving for x values. Notice that on the left hand side, we kind of have a tower where the numbers are increasing, and on the right hand side, they are decreasing. So what kind of x will satisfy this equation? Is that going to be an integer? Would 0 be a solution? Is it irrational? So on and so forth. All those questions will be answered when we get the solution. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. Now one of the things that kind of makes this problem a little easier than others is the bases. We have base 2 here and base 4, which is kind of nice because we can relate those bases. 4 basically can be written as 2 to the second power, right? So let's go ahead and start with that first, and then we're going to convert and convert and convert until we get a nice equation. We're going to need to use logs at some point and arrive at the answer. So let's go ahead and replace 4 with 2 to the second, so that gives us 2 to the power, 3 to the power, 4 to the power x equals 2 to the second power to the power 3 to the power 2 to the power x. By the way, when I write something like a tower like this, like a to the power b to the power c to the power d, I'm basically talking about c and d being grouped together like this, and then that being the exponent for b, and b is the base, and then grouping these together like this. That way, we the exponent for a is basically b to the power c to the power d, so we kind of have to go this way. Otherwise, if we want to write something like this, so instead of writing either we can use parentheses or we can write it like a to the power bc, which is obviously a lot simpler. Okay, so that's what we mean by this exponential tower. And let's go ahead and do the following. We're going to use the power rule. So if you have something like a to the power b to the power c, this is equivalent to a to the power bc, as I said earlier. So we're going to go ahead and multiply these two exponents. But what are the exponents? 2 and 3 to the power 2 to the power x. So we're going to go ahead and multiply them. So that gives us 2 to the power 3 to the power 4 to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 times 3 to the power 2 to the power x. Obviously, 2 and 3 are different bases. There is no relation. There is no way to associate them because 3 is not a power of 2. They're not powers of each other. Or they can't be written as the power of the same integer. So we're just going to leave it like that for now. But this gives us something, obviously, since we got the same basis. We can go ahead and now set the exponents equal, right? Since we have the ba same base, this exponent should equal this exponent. And that's good. Let's go ahead and write it down. 3 to the power 4 to the power x equals 2 times 3 to the power 2 to the power x. At this point, you're thinking, like, I can't combine 2 and 3, but I can combine the 3s. So it makes sense if we put these two powers together, this one and this one, because they have the same base. So that calls for division. 3 to the power, 4 to the power x, divided by 3 to the power, 2 to the power x, equals 2. Awesome. Great. Now, we're dividing two powers with the same base, and the rule applies. And what does the rule say? If you're dividing a to the power b by a to the power c, then that is a to the power b minus c, as long as a does not equal 0. Great. So now we're going to subtract the exponents. So this is going to give us 3 to the power, 4 to the power x minus 2 to the power x, and that is going to equal a 2. So far, so good, right? We simplified the problem a great deal, but we still got some work to do. At this point, I think taking natural log or any other log on both sides would be meaningful. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's go ahead and move the 2 over here, and then L and both sides. Oh, I should probably go with probably this color. So I'm going to natural log this side and natural log this side. You can put number in parentheses, no big deal. But one of the things that's super duper important, and that's why we log both sides, is to bring this down. 
So we can go ahead and make it a coefficient or just multiplier. 4 to the x minus 2 to the x times ln3 equals ln2. Allow me not to write parentheses because I don't like it unless I have to. In this case, I think there's no confusion, right? So if I was writing something like ln n, this would probably be a little confusing, so I would probably use parentheses. Anyways, with numbers, it's easier. So the next step would be whatever x terms you have, try to isolate them, right? That's basically what we do for solving equations. Division by, uh-oh, that's not good. Division by ln3. So 4 to the power x minus 2 to the power x equals ln2 divided by ln3. And what does this tell you? If you said quadratic equations, you're totally right about that. Okay, so we're going to turn this into a quadratic equation uh, whose constant is going to be some weird ln number, but that's okay. We can just call it k for constant, or is that a c? Whatever. Let's go ahead and replace 2 to the power x with something. How about t? t is good, right? And this would become t squared. So we get t squared minus t equals ln2 over ln3. And if you don't like that, you can go ahead and call this k, like I said earlier. This is going to give you a real simple quadratic equation. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's what is beautiful and nice and cool about substitution. It simplifies things a great deal. We can solve and then back substitute, obviously. So by using the quadratic formula, t becomes negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is plus 4k, divided by 2. There you go. You got the solution for t. Uh, we're not looking for t, we're looking for x, but we can always back substitute and convert because we know now that 2 to the power x is t. And k also will be replaced with this. K? K? All right, k. Right. So now let's go ahead and do it. Replace t with 2 to the power x. And then if you want to hold down to k for some time, that's fine because you probably want to leave it at the end and just substitute later. Anyways, let's go ahead and um, set, split these up. Split these up. Okay. This is one of the solutions. And how do you find x from here? We're going to use natural log one more time. ln 2 to the x equals ln this. And then x moves. And we're going to divide ln 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4k divided by 2 divided by ln 2. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and substitute k with what it is. ln 1 plus square root of 1 plus, what is k? k is ln 2 over ln 3, so not, not too bad. 4 ln 2 over ln 3, that's our k, divide by 2, ln that, and divide by ln 2. You see, that is a really nice expression for x, right? And what about the other solution? It's just going to be the same thing with the minus sign because the quadratic equation says so. So it's either this or 1 minus that, and it, it can just, you can just take it from there easy you just have to change the sign 1 minus square root of 1 plus 4 ln 2 over ln 3 that divided by uh, 2 not ln 2 and all of that is divided by ln 2 and this basically gives us the solutions in numerical form what are they <laughs> i don't know they're just numbers and obviously negative numbers are allowed because this is an exponential equation and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it. please let me know don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.